I've years. been here for 30 years. 30 years? Okay. I don't look that old, I know. <laughs> I started when I was six years old. Um, uh, so yeah, I've been here for 30 years. I actually started right here. Uh, it was on, it's almost the 23rd. May 23rd, 1985, I got a summer job here. My father had a, my father's a doctor, and he had a patient who owned a, uh, was the head of a brokerage firm called Cowan and Company. It's probably known in Europe. They, they were once bought out by Societe Generale, and then they went private. And I got a summer job. I had been in many businesses before. I had an MBA. I had a record store in New York. I, was a, I had a jazz business. And then I had lived in Africa for two years, uh, doing finance for the, the, actually the dictator of the country. So I've had a, a very spanned past. And, but I started here on the bottom, just typing in trades, and it was just the perfect environment for me. Back then, there were four rooms like this, screaming, yelling, you know what we call open outcry, right? There was paper, yeah, like, like this. CME. This yeah. is why I still have this in my pocket for <laughs> they, 30 years. They still do that on the CME, right? Or? Oh, perhaps, yes. CME they do, but we don't. Yeah. We haven't done this for years. Wow. And, um, and then I just went up to the ladder. That's the only way to do it here. There's no train, you know, you guys can train for your jobs, mm -hmm. but to be actually down here, it's not like you can go to school for it. <laughs> you know, it's you gotta, you, you learn in the fire. That's the kind of the way it is. Yeah. And it's either the job you love, or it's something you're just not interested in. Did you know that you're also famous in Germany, or not? Do I know I'm yes. famous? Yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course I am. Um, I wasn't always famous here. Yeah. Um, I was always famous for something, but it wasn't always good things. Okay. Um, but uh, in the last, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 years, it's, um, how long have you been here? I arrived here five years ago. Five years ago. So I think it was probably in 06, 07 during the crash that they started letting the press here on the floor, taking photos more, you know, and uh, I have this look, the Einstein look, and uh, I got one picture in a newspaper and then it became sort of a big deal. And then, um, and then it took off. So you're, you're more or less uh, coordinating during opening bell and closing bells? Or so what, you mean, what do I actually do here exactly. for customers? <laughs> so what I do has changed over the years, right? In the old days, so you know, on the outside of this room are brokerage firms, mm -hmm. right? You're Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Citibank. They're connected to trading desks. It's as if you had a company here in the States and you guys were upstairs, all your brokers, mm -hmm. and you didn't want to, um, you were trading electronically, and but also you were you were doing you you had customers that needed a little more care, so you would have a booth here on the floor, and you would have your desk, and you would call down to a broker, or you would send your orders electronically, then they come to my machine, and then I go out, I can go out physically, or I can go out electronically to the market makers, right? Those guys are market makers, mm -hmm. right? So it's the way the room has been set up, has been the same for a hundred years. If we go upstairs, if you, if you take them to the seventh floor, you can see pictures of this room from 1901, and it looks the same. Brokerage firms on the outside, posts where market makers were. You know, back then there was only nine public companies in America, so there's only a few guys here. Yeah. But the formation of the room and the standard of way, the way business was done was almost identical. It's just a little bit, little bit changed. But so I used to do, I've always been, I'm called what's called a $2 broker. So the reason for the name is back in, so Goldman Sachs, Citibank, have their, they have their house brokers, people who work for them. And then, in the, then you have what's called overflow business. So let's say they have three brokers who work for them, and they're doing millions and millions of shares a day. Back in the day when you really needed a human, right now I can send out a thousand orders in four seconds. Right? So there's no need for 30 brokers. I can just hit buttons. But in the old days, I could handle four or five orders at a time, and they would need many, many brokers to do all the business. So Citibank, JP Morgan used to have their own brokers, and then they would have brokers like me who are commission brokers. People who have relationships with the market makers that are special. You know, everybody has a different art down here. Some people are people people. You know, I'm the guy who knows about food, about, uh, it's so funny, in the old days there were 1,600 brokers. So this is a seat. That's what's called a seat on the stock exchange. 
gives me the right to trade stock, right? In the early 1900s, they created 1,564 seats. That was the number. It's like we have in America taxi medallions. You know, when they, they uh, the price of this has gone up and down to, due to supply and demand, due to the market. You know, before the crash of 29, the value of this was about $183,000. After the crash, it went down to 13,000. Then it went up to 250, then down to 100. We, the company went public, right, and merged with, with uh, your exchange back in whatever day, right? It was worth $8 million. So the right to trade this has gone, is it due to supply and demand. They never made, they never made more seats. Yeah. 1,564 seats started in 1899, right? And so the value has gone up all along. So the, the business kind of business I do has changed over the years. Yeah. I used to do overflow business for the big houses. And then when it became electronic, everybody's just, you'd rather use a machine, right? So I had to reinvent, you know, this room had 10,000 employees, right? There were 1,600 brokers. Now there's maybe 800 employees and 400 brokers because of this machine, right? So me as a broker, I could become obsolete or I can reinvent what I do. So I have to have an added value to my customer, right? So my customer wants the human interaction. He wants to know, he doesn't want to know what the machine says. He wants to know what, I'm, what the feeling's going on. And um, so here's an example of what I do. So I track 2,300 stocks. All these stocks, what I do. Okay, every day, you can't see it now, but as you know, stocks open at a particular price, okay? And that's due to supply and demand. Mm -hmm. So depending on what happened overnight, there's an interest. Some stocks is very little interest. Some stocks is a big interest. And so in the morning we get a feed here. Let's go to stocks that you'll know. So I can try. I can I can sort it by the amount of shares to buy and sell, or I can sort it by here. Ex Exxon, Exxon Mobil, um, Weyerhaeuser, U.S. Steel. Right? So when I'm able to track all the stocks. Uh, you don't see any, any spread? Or it's already, right. oh. you don't see, the, the market's open. Okay. So once the mark, all these stocks are opening, the morning imbalance disappears. Now, if I want to see where it's trading, I can go to the trades. So we look, MOC this morning is a company, I don't actually know what they do, but they got a government contract this morning. All right, so It's they... a $2 stock, opened up 50%. It opened at $4.50. It traded as high as $4.77. It went down to $3.77. And these are the trades. I can go back to the opening. Okay, so, and then if I wanna see what a stock is doing now, let's pick, uh, pick Alcoa. So that's the market in Alcoa. Yeah. So okay. this is an active, streaming, running market. So right now, you'll see, it's, as it, you'll see it ticking. Yeah. It changes because it's trading. It's offered, right, 79. So you add two zeros, that is the price that it's, people are willing to buy it at. This is just like and you making audible. a market. Yeah, this is the bid and the offer. Yeah. Someone's willing to pay 84 for 1,800 shares. Someone's willing to sell 15,000 at 84. 83, 84, 82, 83. Do you it's have gonna... the possibility to open short positions as well? Absolutely. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Now, my customer has to borrow. Yeah. I don't do the initiation of the borrow. So if my customer wants to short stock, he does the borrow upstairs, he sends me the order with instructions, and if the stock is trading in line, I can sell it on minus ticks. Yeah. In the old days, you could only short stock on a plus tick. You know what that means? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, they changed that law. You guys have always been able to short on minus ticks. Our belief was that, in or that we don't want short sellers to manipulate the market. Yeah, it, doesn't like take a it doesn't take a genius yeah. to figure out if the stock is going from $8 to $7, then it's going lower. Yeah. So to short it, it's not. So their belief was that if you're gonna make a bet that the stock is gonna go down and you're gonna be a short seller, 
you should have enough confidence in your decision that you're willing to sell it on a plus tick. They suspended that rule during the crisis, Lehman and whatnot, right? Yeah. Uh, for us right now, we can sell on minus ticks short as long as we have a borrow. You know what that is? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. If the stock is down more than 10%, we have a short rule goes into effect, which means I can no longer sell it on straight minus ticks. So if it's a $7 stock, down 70 cents already, and I get an order to sell 50,000 short, I can, my machine will know that I, it's called SSR, short rule exemption. I cannot sell it on a minus tick, okay. so it will always offer, it will always sit on the offer side. Yeah. So if somebody comes in and buys them at 83, I will participate in the same. Does it give you the opportunity to, to launch a pending offer, that once it goes up, like for example, 5% again, on a plus tick, you go short again? Once a short rule is in effect, it stays in effect for the day. Okay, all right. So if the stock goes from seven to five, or seven to six dollars and 30 cents, yeah. so the 10%. and then it goes up to eight, it's still, still the rule is in effect for the until next the next day, day trade. All right. Yeah. So anyway, so what do I do? <laughs> in the morning, so I have basically two customers. Okay, most customers now, as you can see, it's very quiet here. Yeah. There's only 400 brokers. They're not 1,600 brokers, right? Trust me, it's much louder than in Frankfurt. It's much louder, it's still much louder yeah, it's than still Frankfurt. Much louder than in Frankfurt. <laughs> you can hear a, a, a pin drop in Frankfurt, right? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, in the mornings it's busy. In the afternoons it's busy. Uh, usually from 10 o'clock to one o'clock, it's quiet because people put their orders here. So I, I have the opportunity to use algorithms. Look at all the options I have. So if I get a customer order, buy 100,000 shares. In this market, when the market goes, as you see it is, as volatile as it is, nobody really wants to make a stand. Why would I buy 100,000 IBM on the opening if you know Janet Yellen speaking at 10, market goes down 400 points, up 600 points, I look like an idiot. So most people's position is, I just want to be an average, I'm sure your customers are the same, they do the VWAP. They want to be an average price over the day. That's the way you can always uh, explain to you, why, why, did I, why did I do what I did? If I said to them, you know what? I was in an algorithm, I was 25% of the volume over the day, right? And I beat the average price, the customer's got to be happy, right? If I, you know, there's a chance I got, I bought 100,000 IBM on the opening, market goes up 200 points, I look like a genius. <laughs> Chances of that are not so good. I may look like a genius, I'm not always a genius. <laughs> so. Um, so what people do, big institutions, is they will buy, let's say they, they have their meeting, morning meeting, they have a million shares of XYZ to buy, they will buy 200,000 in the opening, they will buy 400,000 in an algorithm from 10 o'clock to two o'clock. Now you look, so we have the choice here. One of the algorithms, I have all these, are, look at, I have hundreds of algorithms that I can choose from, right? So one of the, so you have a time weighted average, you have a volume weighted average, 10%, 15%, look, dollar neutral, I mean you can do all kinds of crazy shit, right? <laughs> I can do anything. So what most people will do is they will buy 200,000 in the opening, they'll buy 400,000 over four hours, I can do it time, right? 25% of world volume, and then at two o'clock, I take a break, and then I buy six, 400,000 to close. That way I can explain to my customer that, I mean, if I had a million shares to buy, that's what I would want to do. Mm -hmm. I want to participate on the opening because you don't know what's going to happen. I want to be an average of what's going on in the world over the afternoon. And then I want to participate in the closing price. Yeah. That way I can, any, any customer would be happy with that explanation, yeah. right? Yeah. Do you get the orders to this thing or? They come directly through from my customer to my machines in my booth and then directly routed to me. Oh, okay. okay, so you can, you're immediately acting. So I receive the order, and then I have a sense of what kind of, what the customer wants to do, mm -hmm. and then I will do, I can, if I want, if he says to me, just buy him, I just hit a button here. He says to me, buy me 50,000 Alcoa at 79, there'll be a little, if the order generates here, there'll be a little square here, and I can hit it, take button, and I can just take the offer. Oh. If he says to me, buy 10,000, and then work, 20% of the volume, I can do that too. I can do anything. So, and it's instant execution. 
It's instant execution, if I choose. Yeah, okay. Okay, sure. otherwise it can be over two yeah. hours or whatever. Yeah. So what do I do? Now, my customer is a hedge fund, my biggest customer. I only have two left. I have one as a big hedge fund. It's about 800 million under management. It's five guys, um, young, they're in their 30s. Uh, they are, uh, they all went to MIT. You know what MIT is? Yeah, it's it's one of these big, yeah. <laughs> so they're all really geniuses. Uh, they are actual geniuses. Um, they are, uh, it's sort of curious, you know, they, these guys all met, they're all poker players. Okay, they met in Las Vegas, they met in college, and they created the, you know what card counting is? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, so these guys are all very super crazy smart, all, all 160 IQ, and they created a uh, card counting team, and they went into all the casinos, and made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. One of my main customer won World Series of Poker, he won $10 million. And so, but what happens is with card counting, even though it's not illegal, it's frowned upon, right? So eventually the casino won't let you in. So they started a hedge fund. So these guys, why not? Logical, why not? logical decision. Logical. I mean. It's all about probability, right? <laughs> Trade for my customer, which is one of many strategies that they do is a short-term trade. So the added benefit of me here on the floor is best utilized in a short-term trade. I'm not an analyst, I'm not an economist, I'm a market reader, I'm a day trader. So my expertise is to make a judgment at two o'clock where the market's gonna close at four o'clock. And through that, I'm able to buy the market, sell the market, short the market, buy stocks, buy futures, and at four o'clock, I'm flat. Amazing. So that's exciting. I mean, for me, that's exciting. It's, you know what, right now, it's the flavor of the moment, right? It's the fruit of the day. It may change in a year or two, right? Five years ago, I didn't do this. I was trading customer business. But every day, as the technology changes, and I'm not a big technology guy. I hate this shit, <laughs> right? I would rather, you go back to the I would tickets, rather have right? this, scream and yell all day long. That was what I was good at. You know, you had a crowd of, it's like, an, it's like an auction. You've been to an auction, right? Old buying antique furniture. You have guys, you re, you're able to read the person, right? You scream and yell, you make, you know. That, was, that made me happy. This, this does okay. I get to work with him, I'm a happy guy. <laughs> Peter, uh, David is the winner of our reality show and he wants to be in finance and maybe a trader, or, you know. Awesome. What, was the, uh, what was the contest? The contest was uh, to trade for three months um, and you get the depot and um, you have to uh, make um, a lot of money out of 10,000 euros at the beginning. That's all they gave you? Yeah, cheap, cheap bastards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They only gave you 10,000 yeah. euros and how much did you make? Um, I didn't make uh, so much because the markets go down 20% and um, I, at the end of time I had 10,000. So but everyone had less than you. Yeah. It's, a go it's okay. So you didn't lose. Yeah, that's true. It's okay. That's a win. <laughs> yeah. In this market, not losing is a win. So that's cool. And it was three months? Uh, three months, yeah. Okay. Well, congratulations. That's Thank awesome. You. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Do you have any recommendations for young people who maybe want to come on the floor? Yeah, I'm 22. Okay. So I have a son who's 22. Oh, okay. He just graduated uh, finance university in, in Boston. It's called Bentley University. Yeah. And he has the bug obviously like you. He's been coming here since I was, you know, I've been here forever, so he's been coming here since he was a kid. Mm -hmm. He loves the market. He's been trading since he was 14 years old. Um, and uh, what I recommend to, you know, you're, you're, in a, you're in a world where information mm -hmm. is the key. Mm -hmm. And the internet and the information highway is so important. And you need to wake up in the morning and spend an hour looking at what's going on, right? Uh, you need to watch finance television. You know uh, Mad Money, you know Jim Cramer? You know who that guy is? Yeah, Mad Money, uh, I've heard nine? about in, okay. in the crash 2008. I've seen the thing. You saw the, him doing that. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if you have it there, but we have it here, I'm sure. Are you, can you get US TV? Um, no, yeah, we get. You can do it online. Yeah. You could watch the stream. You can watch stream. So, you know, for me, you get guys who are excited about the market. Um, 
you know, you, you pick, a, pick an industry that excites you. You know, I, I do mentoring for young, young kids. Yeah. I bring down high schools here and I teach them about the market and we, we do a, um, a contest also, okay. except we give them a million dollars. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but, um, and you get a 13, 14, 15 year old kid yeah. who's, who's maybe fathers in finance, who also gets the bug, who just loves the market and stuff. Yeah. And I, I say to them, all you need to do is walk down the street mm -hmm. in New York City. You look at what someone's wearing on their shoes. Mm -hmm. You look at what kind of phone they have, what kind of computer they have, and what kind of jacket they're wearing. Yeah. And you buy those, all those five stocks, you're good to go. Mm -hmm. So you're buying Apple, Nike, right? You know, Michael Kors or JC Penney or whatever. Yeah. And you know, kids have, young people have a great sense of what's going on. You know, if you ask a kid now, what do you think of Twitter? They think Twitter is a piece of, excuse me, shit. Yeah. <laughs> but they, are, you on, are you on Twitter? No, I don't like that. And that's why Twitter's trading at 14. You ask them about Facebook, everybody's on Facebook, yeah. it's trading at 107. Yeah, that's true. So, you know, you just, you just gotta be aware, look around, you know. The market, is, the market on a, uh, for a long-term investor is not that hard. Mm -hmm. Because, our, at least our market is a great place to invest. Uh, there are companies with value. If you listen to some of these guys, he's not here anymore, but like Jim Cramer, the mad money guy, mm -hmm. he always talks about value. You know, you have to identify who you are. You're a young person, put $500 in the market. Mm -hmm. Whatever you have, that will get you involved. That will make you open the newspaper in the morning. Yeah. You'll watch finance television. You'll listen to him. You'll listen to me, True. you know, <laughs> um, and you buy stocks with value. Right, and that's not, you know, you look around, you'll see that there are, there's a lot of stocks with, with value. Like a Nike, for instance. There's a guy on the floor here, he's a market maker. We should, have they gone, has met any of the market? Fabian. Fabian is a believer in, he said that when he was 17 years old, and he also loved the market, and his parents wanted to buy him a pair of, all the other kids were buying $200 Nike sneakers. Mm -hmm. And he said to his parents, I'll buy a $10 pair of sneakers, buy me whatever money you would have spent on the sneakers, buy me 10 shares of Nike yeah, stock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was $30 and now it's $280. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, you know, if you think about it, that, that's kind of what may, be involved, read a lot. I don't read much, but I love watching this stuff. The internet's amazing as far as, you know, um, information. And, and investment. So when you buy, uh, for you, no, you know what? You can, if you have some money, always have a little bit that you're willing to risk, mm -hmm. and then always and have some that you're you want to look a long term for. Okay, yeah. Trading is a real discipline. Okay, you need to know that you don't always buy when everyone else is buying. That's true, yeah. You know, when 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 Carl Icahn announces that he just took a big position in AGN, well, he bought it three months ago. And now all these idiots are running to buy it because he bought it. Well, that's the time to sell it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you can be contrarian. You know, you can. Um, there, I have a friend. I'm happy to give you his name, who runs a trading school. Oh, okay, cool, yeah. So the discipline of how to trade. I sent my son to trading school from the age of 15 yeah. until he was 19. Because every school, summer. Because in school we don't learn about. You uh, don't learn yeah. about trading. Yeah. You may learn economics. You may learn a little about finance. You may learn about accounting, mm -hmm. but that doesn't necessarily help you here. Yeah. So I'll give you the guy's name. You go online. He mentors people, young people. You take his class. Then he does. A, he has a chat room. So there's there's all kinds of day trading too. There's technical day trading. There's called swing trades. Yeah. I'm sure you guys know about these. You know when sti you, you watch you you get stocks spike up. You make a short play. You know you can do virtual trading. So. Just be involved every day though.